Some of these tips could literally save your DJI Osmo Pocket 3 and prevent you from getting unusable footage with it. Today we are looking at mistakes you will want to avoid to make sure you don't damage the gimbal camera, get bad quality videos, have no or distorted audio and more. Let's jump right in. Now if you're new to the channel, welcome. My name is Matthew and I make videos helping you get the most from your DJI Osmo Pocket 3 but also drones, action cameras, gimbals and more. Everything from the best settings to get you up and running quickly to tips and tricks to help you get more cinematic videos and better looking images with your gear. So if you would like to see more of that then please consider subscribing by clicking that subscribe button down below and when you're down there make sure to check that notification bell so that you will be alerted when my new videos are released it would be greatly appreciated. And let's start with the first mistake you want to avoid when using the Pocket 3 and that is not properly locking the handle into place. Now the Pocket 3 comes with two handles. One handle with a quarter inch thread on the bottom for attaching accessories such as the tripod and the battery handle which extends the battery life of the Pocket 3 when attached. But something you want to be very very careful of is that when you attach these handles that both the locking pins on either side of the handle snap into place so that it's securely attached. Something that can happen is if you're not paying attention you press that handle onto the bottom of the Pocket 3, you hear a click and you presume the handle is attached but actually only one of the locking pins has locked into place, meaning the handle is not securely attached to the Pocket 3. And this could mean if you have the Pocket 3 attached to that handle, which is then attached to an accessory such as a tripod, it could fall off. Or if you're holding the Pocket 3 by the battery handle only, as you're moving it around, the Pocket 3 could actually tip off the top of that handle. So you want to make sure that when you place the handle onto the bottom of the Pocket 3 that you double check to make sure that both them locking pins have snapped into place. And the next mistake you want to avoid making is forgetting to turn on or off the DJI Mic 2. Now this mistake is super simple to make but can be so annoying. You head out to a location, you take the DJI Mic 2 out of its case, attach it to your t-shirt, you turn on the Pocket 3, hit record and spend the afternoon vlogging to it. But when you come home, download the footage and watch it back, instead of the audio being recorded from the mic too, the audio that's on the video recording is the audio recorded by the Pocket 3 itself because you forgot to turn on the DJI mic too. So when you start using the DJI mic too, you always want to make sure that you see the blue light on. That way you know that the mic is turned on. If you don't see the blue light, you will want to turn it on by pressing and holding the power button on the side of it until you feel a vibration and that blue light turns on. You can also double check this by making sure that you see the audio meter on the top of the Pocket 3 screen bouncing up and down as you talk and that way you will know that the signal is being sent from the Mic 2 to your Pocket 3 correctly. You also want to make sure that you turn the Mic 2 off when you've stopped using it. It's very easy to pop the Pocket 3 into the protective case, clip the microphone onto the top of that protective case and put it in your pocket. But then at the end of the day when you pull the Pocket 3 back out to do some more recording and attach the mic to yourself, you realize that the microphone has run out of battery because you forgot to turn the microphone off when you attached it to the case and the battery has just sat draining all afternoon. So when you're done using the mic too, always make sure that you press and hold the power button until that blue light goes out and then you will know that that battery won't be sitting draining while the Pocket 3 is in your pocket. The next thing you want to avoid is setting your camera in risky positions. Having a camera as small and versatile as the Pocket 3 can make you start to think outside the box and want to get more creative shots with it. And this can lead to you pushing the boundaries more and more in terms of where you're putting the camera, but you want to avoid putting the camera in risky positions because this could lead to it getting damaged. Maybe you're at a location and you want to get a shot of yourself walking past the Pocket 3, but there's nowhere really high enough for the Pocket 3 to be sitting except on a handrail and you know it's kind of risky to put it there but you think it'll only be there for a few seconds, I'm just getting a quick clip. So you set it there, walk away from the Pocket 3, the wind might blow on it knocking it over or if you're in a busier location someone might brush up against it and knock it over and if it falls off something like a hand railing it's going to get damaged. So avoid placing the Pocket 3 in areas where you know there might be a risk of it falling, slipping off, sliding off. And remember, if you have the Pocket 3 tracking you, the gimbal is going to be moving on it. So if you have it balanced on something and that gimbal moves, that might knock the balance off, again causing it to fall. 
So always make sure that whatever way you are mounting it or wherever you're placing it, that it's very secure. Always just give it a little wiggle to make sure that it won't tip over. Now, although the three axis mechanical gimbal on the Pocket 3 does smooth out a lot of motion, a lot of it still does come down to how you hold and move the Pocket 3 as you're moving around your location. At the end of the day, the gimbal can only smooth out so much. So if you're moving around a location quite fast or you're making quite fast hand movements as you rotate the Pocket 3 round, you might still find that you're getting quite jerky movement in your footage. Well, I have a tip to help you fix that. On the touch screen, you want to swipe down to bring up the settings menu. And then you want to tap this icon here to go to the rotation speed setting. Changing this from default to slow will mean the gimbal now moves slower to compensate for your movements. And this should result in you getting slower, more gradual and more natural looking gimbal movements as you move the Pocket 3 around and remove some of that jerkiness you might have if you're moving the Pocket 3 around quickly. Now this next mistake is one that catches so many people out and it can be an absolute pain. So be very, very careful you don't make it. And that is that video settings don't carry over between modes. The settings such as resolution and FPS are independent to each mode. So what might happen is you fire up the Pocket 3, you set your video mode to 4K, you capture lots of footage, but then it starts to get darker. Maybe you're capturing a sunset. So you flip into low light mode. You capture lots of beautiful sunset footage. But when you're viewing that low light footage back on your computer at home, you're like, why is the quality so bad? This does not look like 4K at all. And when you check it, you realize that the footage is actually 1080p. And that's because when you changed from video mode to low light mode, the 4K setting didn't carry over to low light mode because low light mode has its own independent resolution setting, which defaults to 1080p. So you need to set the resolution independently in each mode because they don't carry over. Just because you set video mode to 4K doesn't mean all the other modes have subsequently changed to 4K. So always remember that when you first start using a different mode, you want to make sure to check and update the resolution. Now, if you've been capturing footage with the Pocket 3, but when you've played the footage back, all the audio has been really muffled, let me tell you why, and it's all to do with how you're holding the Pocket 3. And this is what a demonstration of muffled audio sounds like when you're capturing footage with the Pocket 3. The Pocket 3 has three built-in microphones, which can capture omnidirectional stereo sound. But you might not know that these microphones are located about halfway up in the Pocket 3 on the two sides and back. It's these little holes. So if you're holding the Pocket 3 slightly further up, you might be accidentally covering these microphone holes, giving you that muffled sound. And also, if your hand is moving up and down over these little microphone holes as you're holding the Pocket 3, you're going to get a lot of unwanted noise. Or if you're moving your fingers or hand over them internal microphones as you're recording audio, you might hear some unwanted noises in the final recording. So just be very careful of how you're holding the Pocket 3 and always make sure when you're gripping it, you're not covering them microphones. You also always want to remember that the Pocket 3 is not waterproof. So if you have just changed or upgraded from an action camera such as a GoPro or an Osmo Action 4, you might presume that the Pocket 3 is waterproof, but that is not the case. So you need to be very careful not to let water get near. So this means don't set it on a tripod next to water in case it falls over into that water, but also don't use the Pocket 3 if it's raining heavily. That's because if it's raining, the rain can make its way into the imports, it could get in behind the screen as you're rotating it, or it could get in around the gimbal and spell all kinds of disaster for your Pocket 3. On top of that, you want to watch out for things like dirt and sand, if you place it down on a beach, for example, make sure when you pick it back up that you brush off any sand that's on it because again, as you rotate that screen or as the gimbal rotates round, that sand could work its way in between the joints and again, start to damage the Pocket 3. Now, one of my favorite features on the Pocket 3 is face tracking. It's almost like having a second person with you controlling the camera. All you have to do is hold the Pocket 3 and the camera will keep track of you as you move around or move the gimbal around. And it means you don't constantly need to be checking the screen, looking away from the camera to make sure you are in frame 
as the Pocket 3 is doing it all for you. However, every single time you want to use this feature, you need to double tap on the screen to start it tracking you. And if you're doing a lot of vlogging, this can start to get annoying. But there's a really handy feature to get around this and you can access it by swiping down on the screen and pressing this button here to turn on something called FT Selfie. Now, when this is turned on, any single time you rotate the gimbal around into selfie mode, if it sees your face, the Pocket 3 will automatically start tracking you. No need to double tap on the screen every single time. The next mistake you want to avoid is not using the windscreen when you're using the DJI Mic 2. If you're recording audio outside, especially yourself talking, having the windscreen attached to the Mic 2 will massively reduce the wind noise. If there is lots of wind noise in your recording, it can be hard to understand what you're saying, but also if there's lots of wind noise in the background as you're talking, the audio can just be hard to listen to in general. Also by reducing a lot of that wind noise by using the windscreen, it will make the overall quality of your recordings seem so much more professional. And it literally takes a few seconds to attach the windscreen every time you want to use the mic too, so there's no reason not to use it. All you have to do is press it down on top of the mic too until you hear it click and that's it the mic too is attached and now you will know that you will have reduced wind noise in your audio recordings now when it comes to charging the pocket 3 a mistake you might make is not using the right charger for fast charging one of the best features of the pocket 3 is just how quickly it can charge it's really impressive the Pocket 3 can be charged to 80% in just 16 minutes, providing up to two hours of recording time. Then if you charge it just another 16 minutes on top of that, it will take it all the way up to 100% battery. But to be able to get the benefits of them fast charging times, you must use a power source with a suitable charger. And that is a charger that can output 30 watts or more. Once you do that, instead of seeing the regular charging message on the screen, which you will see if the Osmo Pocket is not connected to a power source that can output 30 watts or more, you will see this change to say fast charging, letting you know that the Pocket 3 is now fast charging and you will get the benefits of them ultra fast charging times. Now the image quality of the recordings on the Pocket 3 is very, very impressive and very high quality. It's one of the things that has impressed me most about the Pocket 3. However, I do find the image is slightly too sharp. It has a slightly digital look to it. However, I have found with a few small adjustments, this can be massively improved and look much more natural. All you have to do is adjust the image adjustment settings. And you do this by swiping from right to left on the Pocket 3 screen and then tapping the image adjustment option. At the bottom, you want to change this from default to custom. And now you will have two options. One for increasing or decreasing the sharpness of the image and another for increasing or decreasing the noise reduction on the image. My recommendations are to lower sharpness to negative two and reduce the noise reduction to negative one. And I find overall this removes some of that digital over sharpened look and makes the image look much more natural. Now, one of the worst things that can happen if you're using the Pocket 3 and the Mic 2 is that the audio can be too loud and this can lead to it becoming distorted. Now you can check this using the audio meter on the top of the Pocket 3 screen. And again, this audio meter shows when the Mic 2 is turned on and connected to the Pocket 3. Now, as you talk, you will see this audio meter bounce up and down. And this is showing you the volume of the audio on the mic too. Now the further this audio meter goes to the right, the louder the audio is that's being recorded. If it stays in the green as you're talking, this means that your levels are good. If it goes up into the orange area as you're talking, this indicates that the audio being recorded is too loud. And if as you talk, it's in the red area, this means the audio is now so loud it's getting clipped and will be distorted. Ideally, as you talk, you want the audio peaking around the 75% mark or just touching the orange bar and no more. Now, if your audio is above that in the red, you will first want to make sure that the microphone is not placed too closely to your mouth. If you're attaching it to your chest area, then a top tip is to place it around a hand's width away from your mouth and then you will know it's a perfect distance away from your mouth as you're talking. If you have placed the microphone the correct distance away from your mouth and you're still finding as you talk that audio meter is hitting the red area and therefore getting distorted, 
then you will want to reduce the transmitter gain. To do this, you want to swipe from right to left on the Pocket 3 screen and then press the Pro button to enter the Pro settings. Now with the DJI Mic 2 connected, you will see this Mic 2 icon just to the left of the Pro button and you want to press this and then you want to scroll down until you see the transmitter gain option. When you press into this, you will see a slider and you can slide this upwards to increase the gain, therefore increase the loudness of the audio coming from the mic too. Or as we want to in this case, you can reduce this slider to reduce the volume of the audio coming from the mic too to the pocket three. So what you want to do is reduce this transmitter gain by one or two points, go back to the pocket three home screen, start talking again and see where that audio meter is peaking if it's still in the red area, then go back to the transmitter gain and reduce it a few more points and keep doing this until as you talk, the audio is peaking around the 75% mark. And now you will know that you're recording beautifully clean audio free from distortion. Now, the next thing you want to watch out for is be very careful when using the protective cover. Now, I really like the protective cover that comes with the Pocket 3 and it's a really handy way of transporting it around. Instead of having to carry the larger carrying bag with you, you can simply place the Pocket 3 into that protective cover and then it easily fits in your pocket. So you can quickly bring it out, capture some footage and put it back into your pocket. Whereas the larger carrying bag simply wouldn't fit into your pockets. However, when you're using the protective cover, just be very careful when inserting the Pocket 3 into it. Firstly, you want to make sure that the gimbal is rotated round into its locked position. If it's not, it might move when you try to insert it into that protective cover, or if it's already rotated the wrong way, it simply won't fit. Then you want to make sure that the screen is positioned between these two raised sections inside the protective cover and press down on it. If the screen isn't exactly between them raised sections and you press down on it, it won't click into place. And you don't want to keep trying to force it to click down in as you may damage the screen. Instead, lift it back out, realign it, and then push it back in. Remember, it shouldn't take much force at all to put that Pocket 3 into the protective cover. So if you are finding you need to put a lot of force on it to try and get it down into that cover, it's probably not aligned properly. So I recommend taking it back out, realigning it, and then pressing it down in place. Also, when putting it in, remember to press on the body of the Pocket 3, not the gimbal, as the gimbal area is more delicate. And if you keep putting it in the protective case by pressing down on the gimbal, you could eventually damage that gimbal on the Pocket 3. Now, if you have been vlogging with the Pocket 3 using selfie mode, and you've been checking the screen to make sure everything looked great, but when you came home and played the footage back, you couldn't understand why the footage has been flipped the wrong way around. That's because you have an option called selfie flip turned on. So to prevent the footage from being mirrored, you want to turn that selfie flip option off. Now you can do this by swiping down on the screen, pressing the settings button, and then scrolling down to the selfie flip option and turning this off. Now you might get caught out by having this option on because regardless if this option is set on or off, the footage will always look the same on the Pocket 3 screen. This mirroring effect or the footage being flipped the other way around only gets applied to the footage stored to the SD card on the Pocket 3. So if you're heading out to capture lots of footage, it's always worth double checking this option. Now something to be aware of is that tracking is not available in all modes. So if you have planned a shot where you want the Pocket 3 to track you, you're heading out yourself at sunset or in lower light situations, you fire up the Pocket 3, put it into low light mode, you're going to be disappointed to find out that tracking is unavailable. Another mode where tracking is only available in certain resolutions is slow motion mode. So if you planned a shot where the Pocket 3 would track you running by in slow motion, for example, then you will only be able to do this in 1080p or 2.7k resolution as tracking is not supported in slow motion mode when using a resolution of 4k. Now, later down the line, DJI might add tracking mode to more recording modes via a firmware update, but for now, just be aware that you can't use tracking in every mode available on the Pocket 3. Now on the Pocket 3, if you swipe down on the screen to bring up the menu and select this sun icon, 
you can move this slider up and down to change the screen brightness. Now the obvious option here might be just to set this all the way up to 100%. However, for a few reasons, I recommend that you actually lower this down a bit. Firstly, having this set all the way up to 100% will drain the battery on your pocket free faster. And for most situations, you don't actually need the brightness to be set all the way up to 100% to see the screen clearly. So you might as well get the benefits of having a slightly extended battery life. Secondly, setting the screen brightness all the way up to 100% will make the Pocket 3 generate more heat. I find if I'm outside recording, 50 to 60% screen brightness is a good enough sweet spot for me to still be able to see the screen clearly, but save some battery. So I recommend going into that option and lowering the screen brightness just a bit. Now the next mistake that might catch you out with the Pocket 3, especially if you're a beginner, is choosing the wrong color mode. Now you can change the color mode in the Pocket 3 by swiping from right to left in the screen, again selecting the Pro options so we have more options available to us, scrolling down and selecting the color setting. Now each time you tap this, the color mode will change and we have three options available on the Pocket 3. Normal, HLG and D-Log M. Now the normal color mode is going to give you images that are good to go straight from the Pocket 3 and don't require any color grading. However, if you have been reading some of the reviews of the Pocket 3, you might have heard of the benefits of using D-Log M and have switched into that color mode. Now D-Log M is a flatter color profile and this preserves more highlight and shadow details, allowing you to get more dynamic range. It's also 10 bit, which when compared to the normal profile can provide more vibrant colors with smoother transitions between these colors. So you might think, great, I want them benefits. I want a better looking image. I'll go with D-Log M. But when you capture lots of footage and come home and play that footage back, you're going to see that the footage coming straight from the Pocket 3 when captured in that D-Log M mode is going to look very gray and very desaturated. And that's because before that footage can become usable, you have to color grade it. A low D-Log M footage can look better than the normal color profile. You must color grade that footage first in order to get them benefits and make that footage usable. So if you're new to video editing and you've captured lots of footage in D-Log M, but you don't know how to color grade it, then you're going to find that you have a lot of gray, desaturated and unusable footage. So I recommend if you're completely new to the Pocket 3 or completely new to video editing and you don't know how to color grade, then you stick with the normal color mode. And this is going to give you beautiful looking and vibrant footage straight from your Pocket 3 that you don't have to do anything to so that you can use the footage straight away. Now the next mistake I recommend you don't do with the Pocket 3 is don't use the glamour effect. Now the way you know if glamour effects is turned on or off of the Pocket 3 is by checking for this little face icon in the top right of the screen. If you see this face icon, glamour effects is turned on and if there's no face icon, glamour effects is turned off. Now the way you turn glamour effects on in the Pocket 3 is by swiping from right to left on the home screen and then you will see this glamour effects option. And when you press this, you can turn them on or off. Now, although you can turn on or off the glamour effects on the Pocket 3, you can't actually adjust which individual glamour effects settings are turned on or off and the strength of each of them settings unless you use the DJI Memo app. So with the DJI Memo app open, you can tap this glamour effects option on the top of the screen. And then when you go into this, you will have options for smooth, brighten, slim, eyes, dark circles, nose, and more. Now, the reason I don't recommend using these glamour effects is because they can just make your face look completely unnatural. It can start to almost look cartoony, and this will just degrade the quality of the footage you're capturing with the Pocket 3. So if you are looking the highest quality footage possible from the Pocket 3, then I recommend turning glamour effects off. So hopefully now you know all the mistakes you should avoid making when using the DJI Osmo Pocket 3 to make sure you don't damage it or get unusable footage. Are there any other mistakes that I have missed that you think other Pocket 3 owners should be aware of? Then post it in the comments down below to let me know and let them know. Now before you go, if you've liked this video and you've learned something new, please let me know by giving me the thumbs up and clicking that like button down below. And if you love all things Pocket 3, but also drones, action cameras, gimbals and more, then I recommend you check out my channel where I have a ton of other content to help you get better results with your camera gear. If you don't want to miss any of my upcoming videos, then I recommend you click that subscribe button down below 
And while you're down there, make sure to check that notification bell so that you will be alerted when my new videos are released. It would be greatly appreciated. And if you want to stick around and watch a few more videos now, here's a few I personally recommend. I'll not keep you back any further. Thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you over there.